this time we've got the players from a red dead redemption they don't just voice it they act it these are real time real people who acted all their parts like a real movie have you played the game if you haven't go out and buy it anyway we have Red Dead Redemption 2. We are going to ask every question we can. We're going to get to the bottom of everything. Our guy right here, Brett, there he is. Brett Parker is going to host the panel for us tonight. How are you guys? How's everybody doing in quarantine? Uh, hey! Yeah, we're good. <laughs> All right. Man. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to have a lot of fun over the next hour. Brett, is you're in charge. It's your show. So have at it. And folks, have some fun. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, help. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Bye, Jeff. All right. So joining us right now, we have uh, Rob Weedoff. All right. We have Peter Bloomquist. Woohoo! We have Alex McKenna. Woo! Kylie Vernoff. Hey. And last but certainly most not least, Roger Clark. Oh, oh. right so um i actually well we uh put it out there on the various social medias we have instagram twitter we have uh, a ton of questions so right now i'm gonna do my best to sort of uh get through as many as we can um and actually the first question um is a guy al j um this is from twitter he has a question for Rob. So Rob, you, uh, you are returning from Red Dead Redemption 1. Now that was a fair amount of years ago. So he is very curious, A, what was it like stepping back into the character? And B, technologically speaking, what was the main difference going uh, performance capture then to performance capture now? Oh, great question. Thank you so much for asking. Um, it's to, to step back into that role was so much fun because to be able to play a cowboy who they kept telling me throughout all of the production of Red Dead Redemption, John Marston is not afraid of anyone and he's the biggest badass on the planet. They wanted me to have that idea. So whenever I would do these scenes, they would hopefully come across as such. But that's so great. It's so great to be able to to do that and, and try and behave that way because that's really not who I am in real life. <laughs> um, this is true. But, but so the other thing about stepping back into that character is you got to remember that John is very, very different in Red Dead Redemption 2, at least at the beginning of it, than he was in Red Dead Redemption. And I guess you learn through playing Red Dead Redemption 2 how John became who he is in Red Dead Redemption. And uh, so it was it was really fun, but it was very different um, because it was kind of a different role, really. But worked with really great people and enjoyed every second of it. To answer your second question, the technology was different in ways that I don't understand, I'm sure. But one thing that was definitely different was uh, the playable character, Arthur Morgan, was able to walk in and out of scenes and so you had to account for that so if if you're you know doing if you're doing a scene with someone other than arthur morgan there's a chance that arthur would walk into the scene and you would have to acknowledge him and you would say a line or or whatever you would do to to make sure that it's <laughs> you obviously see that he's there so that whole aspect of it was very different but it made it so much better and it was really fun to do. So awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Great answer. Great answer. Great answer. All right. Well done, well Jumping done. back. I did a Twitter one. So let's do an Instagram one. Um, all right. This one uh, is Tommy L. And uh, this is going to be for Peter Bloomquist. All right. So. They say in wrestling, <laughs> if they love you or they hate you, you're doing something right. But if they love to hate you, you're really doing something right. How much of you was infused into the notorious Micah Bell? 
the fuck up, Brett. No. One hundred percent. Um, I just proved it. No. How much of how me was in infused in? Good question, Tommy. Tommy L. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, you always infuse some kind of some aspect of yourself into a character, right? Um, yeah. That's uh, whether he's a deplorable character or a heroic character. Um, you know, even the heroic characters. Uh, hear that dog? Dog. I, I do. I Don't do. Don't kick it, Peter. Don't kick Don't. it. <laughs> um, you know. It, there's always a bit of, of myself in, in anything that I do. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm picking out the asshole part and putting it in there necessarily, although that's maybe partially true. But I think okay. everyone um, on some level um, has made uh, questionable choices and has, done, has made mistakes and done things that they feel really, really shitty about, uh, really bad about, uh, things that they regret um uh, things that they did despite knowing that they should have done better and so maybe tapping into uh, some of those um darker parts of the brain and sticking them into a character is 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 what i did to some degree um you know it wasn't a definitive uh uh process <laughs> i just sort of let my brain unravel okay I like that. It was it, your brain unraveling was amazing. You're you're a master brain unraveler. That was that well, was fantastic. I, I wish more people would think the way you did, Brett, because <laughs> it hasn't gotten me too far. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, all right. This is somebody named Icarus. I'm hoping I'm yeah, Icarus. Um, all right. This one is for. Uh, Roger Clark. Hello, Roger. Um, hey. Hello, everyone. Hey, Rog. Um, Arthur Morgan has been compared to some of the biggest names in Westerns. Uh, he's been ranked right up. My screen just went out. Oh, dear. He's been, sorry. Well, I can pick it up just from there, Brett. I can just tell you that you're absolutely right. I mean, he really is one of the best, isn't he? He is one of the best. <laughs> when you got the script, at what point did you realize that some pure magic was going to happen? Oh, my gosh, man. I didn't know until the game came out. You know, and that was one of the things about working on a video game is... And especially one that was a, as big a story as Red Dead 2, you know, we we really were given the luxury of of, of a lot more time than most AAA titles get to to, to create a story a story mode for our for our game. And um, I didn't know though. I didn't know. All I knew is that I when I was playing Red Dead Redemption, how much I loved John Marston, and you know how how much it was probably going to be a bad idea to try and recreate what Rob had done. So I just was like, I just got to do my own thing and I got to trust the people that I'm working with that, that it is the right thing. But to be honest, I had no idea that people were going to, how we, how they were going to react to Arthur until it came out, you know? And uh, and even the first few days that it was out, people were like, Arthur, who? And then they're like, ah, maybe he's not so bad. And then they're like, oh, no, <laughs> no, not Arthur. I, anyway, spoilers, we did mention spoilers, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I had no idea. I didn't know what to expect, you know, uh, which had its advantages and disadvantages when we were working on it. But, you know, we, we put as much in the can as, say, maybe five or six seasons of a TV show. But can you imagine doing that without any audience <laughs> uh, feedback whatsoever until after all your work is done? So it was kind of unique in that, in that I guess. I, 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 do, I, don't, I don't know to answer your question. Okay. So you just sort of, you watch the magic unfold live and, and that I was just, it. I just had to trust the people that I was working with, that we were doing, so that we were all on the right track, you know, like, then we all had that, had to build that trust. But as we worked together for so long, it got easier to do that. You know? Kylie. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, you 
have had a very long and strong background in uh, TV and film. Mm -hmm. And then you come onto this project and just motion capture. Yeah. So how on earth would that compare, like to go from that to the tight suit with the ping pong balls and how did that compare for you? That, uh, that is a fantastic question. I, um, you know, first of all, I had no idea that I was doing motion capture. I had no idea when I got this job. Um, I like to say that I was just told to wear comfortable undergarments and then report to uh, <laughs> the van that would drive us to set. Um, and when I got there, I was, you know, put in, I think Alex calls it like a super, like superhero scuba suit with the, yeah, with the balls all over them. Um, and it was a little, uh, well, I was terrified. Honestly, I was terrified. And because Rockstar is so um, um, closed mouthed about their work, I didn't even know what accent to use. But I think um, Rob was there on my first day. Roger was there on my first day. Luckily, Peter was not there on my first day um, to mess me up. Lucky. But, <laughs> but uh, these gents sort of made me feel comfortable and showed me that it was fun and that it was a relaxed atmosphere. And how it compares to film and TV is that it's, um, it's really similar. You are acting out these scenes with these other actors. And once you sort of get used to the suits, which happens pretty quickly, um, you really get to play these scenes. The biggest difference is that everything is play pretend. So like mm -hmm. if Susan, right? If Susan hops on a horse, um, I'm really doing that. It's just not a real horse. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe getting a little help putting my foot in a real stirrup to go over this thing that's built to the size and scale of a horse. And like Susan smokes, but that would be a straw. So the animators handle all of the externals, but the acting is really, really like your best film and TV work, um, uh, but cameras are 360. So um, yeah, I, I felt like my, I felt like, um, I felt like I, I, I was pretty, um, pretty easily able to figure out what was going on once I got used to um, um, the, the balls all over. And if you tried to hug someone, you'd get stuck. So that was tricky. Luckily, so you're not a big hugger. Yeah, your balls would get stuck, yeah. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> yeah. Just say every time the balls get stuck. It's true. Uh -huh. Yeah. Get your balls all wrapped up and tied up in everyone else's balls. You do not want that to happen. I don't recommend that. Mostly the wires, okay? It's our wires that get mixed up, Peter. That's right. Yeah, the balls. It's like you didn't do this for five years. <laughs> Come on. You lose track whose balls are whose. That's that might be true. I mean, he never had him. I don't know. Whatever. I'll just <laughs> let's go down the ball wormhole. Remember the tu remember the tusks we had too with the face cams on them, and sometimes we'd have to oh, man. dodge each other. Yeah, dodge each other's us. tusks. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but it really uh, is it's like a sound stage. It's like a sound stage. So it's uh, it's just awesome. Just awesome. I mean, it's got to be. It's just got to be incredible. I can't even. I can't even imagine. Um. All right, let's go over to Instagram. All right. Sorry, I apologize. The cerebral, the cerebral social media. <laughs> so, uh. Yeah, I'm just, it's here. I don't know if it's like the whole JLA Snyder cut thing, but there is a lot of people um, asking if there's <clears throat> extra footage, major things that maybe happened with a character or, you know, um, anything additional. A lot of people are asking that. Um, anything that got cut, anything like that. I think people are just, you know, always on the lookout for the next new cut of something. Um, Alex, was there anything that you did that comes to mind that you were like, oh, that actually didn't make it in? Well, that's a big question. I mean, we worked on this game for, for five plus years. So there's a lot of stuff that um, perhaps didn't make it in, but that's, that's typical of any film, you know, yeah. what, what you're shooting, 
to elevate the story to its greatest potential, you know, you don't need all of the fat, all of the gristle. So you just, you know, cut it away. That's totally normal. And that's stuff that I couldn't tell you from, you know, from back in the day. However, uh, I will say that there were scenes that we had to reshoot given uh, some of the choices the writers made and what was happening and what seemed to be like the organic uh, trajectory of the narrative. There were things that they wanted to, um, I guess, just make more specific. You know, it, I mean, one of the coolest things, and this is a little bit of a tangent for me, uh, and like Kylie said, it, it truly is like working on a film or a television show, except you're doing so much more in your imagination, but we're still working like we're doing theater in the round. We're working off each other. You know, uh, there's a grave misconception that we do audio work. We're just voices. We're, you know, and, and again, I do a shit ton of audiobooks. I do a lot of voiceover stuff. That's just not what we did on this project. So no harm, no foul. It's just like not how we should talk about the work that we did because so much of it was us being together, working across from each other, like truly acting. You know, if somebody's crying, somebody's crying. If somebody's hugging, we're really hugging and trying not to get our balls crossed or our, wiles, our wires crossed while we're doing it. You know, there, there was an extra amount of, you know, technicality to work over. And part of that was, you know, what is the weather? Right. So I remember there was a scene where they had decided that actually it needed to be snowy or it needed to be muddier. So then we came back two years later and redid the scene that we had done before because we weren't stepping in mud the way that we needed to. And you can animate a lot of things, but why, why would you, you know, if you have your actors, if we're there anyways, if we can specify what we're doing to tailor it, to make it even more just beautiful and 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 like I just said specific then then why wouldn't we and so that was something that was really cool that I think um you know isn't a cut scene but it's definitely something that we got to modify to hopefully create a world to make it even more you know beautiful like this game every time I'll like take a break and then I'll watch a little bit of it. And I was a game player a little bit in college. Like I loved, I loved Rockstar and getting to work with them or for them was such a privilege. And then every time I get to see a little something, I'm like, this is a fucking movie. Like, this is like one of those seventies epic films, you know, it, it blows my mind every time. And it's because of that attention to detail that they sometimes did over that I think is, is something really special to, you know, to point out. Nope. I could not agree with you more. That's just, it's unbelievable. Um, let's see. Me, 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 You want one? <laughs> All right. We're going to do okay. a Peter. Do you have a cut scene? I take it over for me. <laughs> is there a cut scene you remember? Okay. Hold on. Actually lies. There is one. It's not exactly a cut scene, but they allowed me to do a few versions of the epilogue. And I'm gonna try to talk about it as vaguely as possible to not yep. spoiler it up. But um, I did something where I went full Sadie and it was it was too hardcore. And so they cut that for sure. Um, it was too much. And I'm pretty sure uh, Roger witnessed it all. And at oh, yeah. the end of it, every man who was in the sound stage, and I'm going to say that's about, it was like 96% on that day, um, looked like somebody had just, yeah. just taken their manhood. And that's all I'll <laughs> say about that. And that did not make it in. So I guess that's a cut scene. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I all would right, say Peter, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> I'm just trying to get over the, 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 the cut manhood. Um, Truth. All right. Truth. I'm, you know what? I'm going to, this one, this one is coming from me. Uh, so Peter, the last time I saw you was at greater Philly. And I remember when I was standing in front of your booth, you had an interaction. I'm not going to ask you specifics, but I remember hearing the people come out and they were like, Oh my God, he was so nice. 
do you find that people just expect you to be a not nice person? Like when you interact with your fans, are they a little bit, a little bit timid and kind of there's some trepidation involved and then they kind of feel at ease or do people understand that you are just acting? Because I hear stories about how the guy who played Joffrey, he was so hated, you know, everywhere he went, it was something like that. Is something is, was there anything like that with Micah where you're just like so surprised that people couldn't, your performance was so good at being bad that people couldn't get their head around that? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I have encountered that uh, quite a bit um, where, yeah, people have responded um, either in person or on uh, social media where, where I'll read things or <clears throat> hear things. People go, oh man, he's such a nice guy. He's such a great guy. Um, you know, which, you know, I, I'll take as a compliment, of course, when anyone says that you're a great guy, that means I've really fooled them. Um, no, they, they, you know, a lot of people seem surprised. They go, oh, he played such a, such a terrible, terrible person, but he's really a nice guy in real life. Um, that's great. I'm glad that I can, <laughs> cause what am I, well done. <laughs> I enjoy meeting people and talking to people in real life. Micah doesn't, Peter does to a limit. <laughs> and usually uh, it works out for the best, but yeah, um, I'm a really nice guy. <laughs> keep I, uh... saying it, Pete, we'll believe you more and more. <laughs> I, could... <laughs> I, I keep trying to convince myself. And all I, that. Am. I am. I'm a nice, nice guy. guy. But no, I hear that and it's awesome <laughs> and uh, it's great to hear, so yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, we're gonna go back to Rob. Uh, this is from Twitter. This is actually from Mr. Marston. Um, and he would like to know, uh, what is your favorite John Marston moment from Red Dead Redemption 2? What was, was there any moment that stood out that was like something highly impactful and emotional? Like what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, thank you for the question, question Mr. Marston. <laughs> if I could only spit it out. Uh, that's a great question. And I, I think that i know that we've said spoiler alerts but the the uh moment where arthur and john are at the top of the hill there's a lot of reasons for this that was uh, at the very end the, that was in fact the very last thing that we did in the motion capture store that i did and um i think most people were pretty much done by then and we kind of had a rap party at the end of it whatever but that was uh really emotional and and it was one of the things where i asked our director several different times like how how emotional is john right now and he didn't understand what i was saying but really what i was asking is would john cry right now because i personally was having trouble not crying in that moment and it was <laughs> he really didn't understand what I was asking. And then finally, when he did understand, he said, John Marston does not cry. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> I thought, oh no, I better not then. But we got that scene and it was it was the end of, I, I don't know that I worked for five years, but for however long it was that I worked with all these great people and uh, every everyone, it was kind of a finale type moment and it was very special and the scene of course is very emotional too but there, there was just a lot of everything kind of came together in that moment and uh when when the director decided that he liked the take that he liked it just it was like the relief of oh my goodness we i think we just did it and i think everyone in the room felt that and it was really really a special moment and um there were a lot of really fun funny things but as far as what was most emotional that that was it for me by far when did you start on red dead redemption rob was it 07 08 what when did you, well, how long have you been playing john marston well uh, well 2008 i think is when it started because i think it was two years that's and 13 then, years uh, man 13 years. So. 
Uh, you know that, of course, it's simple mathematics, but yeah, it's just I was, I was repeating that, man. <laughs> Very fortunate. Yeah, it's mad. We are fortunate. We're for we're the fortunate ones. <clears throat> I mean, how many times sidebar, but how many times like when we're interacting with, you know, people over social media or when we're at comic cons or whatnot, like it is such a beautiful thing to be able to say with complete honesty, complete honesty, how grateful I am to know these humans and to have worked with them on such a special project. I, you know, I know all of us have been doing this a really long time and there are projects that are important and you're glad you did them, but it's nothing like what this was, you know, like we're all on a text chain where we talk all the time, <laughs> like all the time. Yeah, it's relentless. That, it's, <laughs> it's, relentless. <laughs> it's a fam, like, it's a real family. We really yeah. are a family. Okay. Feels that way. And thank God, like, cause of how tight it you guys were in day in and day out and in the suits and everything like that. Thank God you guys actually all like each other. Like, can you even imagine if it was like, oh shit. Ugh. I think we would have just somehow like eaten the other, whatever, the person we didn't like alive. Like we just would have figured it out. <laughs> like we're all pretty smart, right? Mm. You know, just, <laughs> nope. No thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, this one is from uh, Foxy Lady. <laughs> um, this is for Roger. Um, did you pitch uh, any ideas to the writers or, or was, was there some uh, improvised or messed up takes that actually made it into the final cut creatively? How much did you, did you get? There wasn't a lot of improv, but there was a little bit from time to time over the five years I was working on it. And I, you know, the, the writers, the main, there were so many writers, but the main three ones were uh, Dan Hauser, Rupert Humphreys and Michael, uh, oh gosh, no gosh, I forget, Unsworth. Sorry, Michael Unsworth. And they were the three main ones. We worked with, uh, Michael was on set a couple of days and then of course, Mr. Hauser showed up every once in a while too. You know, this is in charge, he's one of the guys in charge of the company, but we, we never really conversed with them face to face. I think we communicated more kind of off the, on the pages, you know, as they saw what we were doing. You know, they would slightly change the dialogue of certain characters as we saw the evolution of those characters together. And they, and they did such a fantastic job of suiting each performer, you know, but I, not a lot. There wasn't a lot, but there were a few little happy accidents. I remember one being uh, like, for example, on when you're robbing the trolley uh, as Arthur with Dutch and Lenny. And then at the end, when Arthur's trying to figure out how to stop the thing and the brake just comes off in his hand, there was a bit of ad-libbed dialogue there, as, all, as I recall. So there was some fun stuff with Bill on Guarma when you do that mission, trying to rescue the girl, uh, who I believe was uh, one of the locals' nieces and what, or, or something. And you go through this with the one-armed uh, fella, Baptiste. Um, there was some pretty funny dialogue and when we jumped off, into a, off a cliff into a, a little lagoon. But uh, for the most part, you know, we uh, there wasn't as much improv as on other projects no although okay. you know i always felt though that if i did have a suggestion to make i always knew it was going to be listened to and sometimes we did it too but most of the time actually no okay let's see we'll go over uh kylie so susan's pretty hard on the other women in the camp but she also <laughs> do anything to protect them to say the least to say the least. <laughs> uh, but she would yes. do anything for them uh, yeah. How would you describe her role with the girls? And is it tough love? Is it beyond tough love? Is it, you tell me. Uh, yeah. Um, she, uh, Susan, I think, I think the answer to that question is that Susan sees her role very specifically uh, in the gang. I think that Susan has found uh, that she needs to be useful or feels that she needs to be useful to keep her place where she is. And so I think that she thinks that keeping the girls in line is a huge part of her job. And it is, it absolutely is. Uh, I can tell you that the first scene that I had with Mia Davis who plays Tilly Jackson, the first time we ever worked together, <laughs> I had to, uh, the, the script called for me to grab her by her ear and throw her to the ground. Um, by her ear? By her ear. 
And so luckily, because we're wearing helmets, there was a thing that I could actually grab. And, and you know, if, pe if people know this, this little moment, it's where Tilly, you know, I'm telling her to get to work. And she says, but I don't want to work, Miss Grimshaw. I don't feel good. And I say, I don't care how you feel, girl. And I just whip her to the ground. And that was... <laughs> The first time that I realized that Susan was was pretty ab abusive to these women, and uh, I have similar moments with Karen, with Mary Beth, uh, slapping, punching, throwing to the ground. Um, and, but I do think that she really believes that she is imparting knowledge in them. She is letting them know, like like with Mary Beth, when she goes after Mary Beth for her vanity, and she says, you know, vanity will get you nowhere. Um, I think she really knows from having been a younger woman with that kind of place in the camp and having fallen out of favor with, with the men, you know, men, male gaze, uh, that she really believes that you better find something else that's useful where you're going to get tossed to the side. And then, you know, and then when things go, you know, um, when she takes things far, like when um, Molly breaks the rules, we'll just say that. Um, she knew the rules and she breaks them and Susan exacts what she thinks is appropriate uh, uh, punishment. Um, and, and Karen really comes to her and, and calls her to account for what she did. She said, you know, that girl was just in love. And I think that, that for Susan, it's a bit of a reckoning, you know, that, that, this, that this firm adherence to the rules of the camp has cut her out of, um, you know, of any... Uh, of a lot of the emotional attachments. And I think, um, and I think it's sad for Susan because it's very clear that she does love the girls, um, but I think she's just afraid to uh, let them be soft or, may, or maybe she's afraid to let herself be soft. That's why, that's why I think Mike always found a kindred spirit in Grimshaw. Yeah. For a lot of yeah. those, same, those same reasons. <laughs> yeah. If only she were 20 years younger. Yeah. Yeah, that my first time working with Peter Blumquist is another story where he had to pull me onto his lap and uh, and and just torture Susan about her age. Really? Oh, I bet you were a tiger back in your day. <laughs> a compliment. Really a compliment. Nice Try to keep a straight face working with that guy. <laughs> um, but that's a great question. Thank you so much for that. Of course. All right. Griffius 19 Griffius 1899 um and this is kind of for everybody so everyone will probably have some form of different what was the hardest thing to do in performance capture crouch running uh, crouch running yeah. crouch running crouch crouch running crouch crawling crouch walking crouch walking with a gun crouch walking with two revolvers crouch walking with a shotgun it took about two or three days of just crouching. It was great for your thighs, but it was the hardest part. <laughs> I totally agree, 100%. I was out of it for like days after that. My thighs were aching. Yeah, all the, uh, the, crouch, walk, the crouch walking, running, crawling, crouch, holding yeah. your gun. Absolutely. It was a workout. If I did that every day for like a month, I'd be like a but super Pete, Me and Rob did it. Me and Rob did it the most. I know you. We did it a lot too. But me and Rob, as the playable characters, we yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. We had about three days straight of it, right, Rob? As far as I recall, and then we had to top up every once in a while, right? <laughs> but there was like three days straight, wasn't there, Rob? Yeah, it was. I mean, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Yeah. So you and I'm do it. and I'm glad that I'm glad that we did it too, because a lot of other games it would have been someone else. I'm really glad yeah. that we did do it because it adds to the immersiveness. And you know, and to this day, I can I can spot Marston's walk from a hundred yards in game. I Why did I have to do it so often if I wasn't even a playable character? <laughs> well, because you and I did some really cool stealth missions, I think. And of course, I and then I asked Rod, just make Peter do it, the fucking thing as well. Would That's what I'm getting at. I had a feeling that that was the case. <laughs> Thank you for my massive thighs, my friend. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> Peter, don't I lie. Think... You're just grateful to be included. Come on. It's true. It's true. I, for me, it was like prop guns. I, I think, I don't know if, Alex, if you played with guns much growing up, but I think the guys, like, they could flip them around and turn them around. And I was like, can you teach me? How? Like, I didn't have a natural affinity for how to hold a gun or I'd be holding it wrong. And 
you know, and that stuff matters. It, it matters where your finger placement is. And I remember one time I was supposed to flip it back and um, that I'm not a natural with that stuff. Uh, but I, I did okay. <laughs> it's you did. hard. No, you did. You did a fantastic. Remember when on the mission where we went rescue Mia and, yeah. uh, and you, you went all, yeah, that was pretty cool. And then that everybody, was, that's knife was a sponge. So there was, she was able to really go for the jugular. <laughs> right. I would there. say the, the prop guns uh, definitely did a number on like my back area. It's not, you know, Sadie often has a, a shotgun. And so we would be given, or I would be given like a sawed off shotgun, but that had the appropriate weight to it. So as, you know, Alex, I don't have that much experience holding this like, gun with one hand and hours and hours on end it's the same thing when you're stabbing somebody which i feel like everybody here knows this mm -hmm. is a really specific movement that i myself has literally no experience with so to be doing that for days and hours or whatnot like i would come home with just like crazy spasms my back out things hurting but I would also like to tell everyone watching, um, the females did all of our stunts. So we're talking, you know, me climbing a water tower, groom all of us did the females, everything in heels. So just remember that when you're watching what you're watching. Correct. We all yeah. did it in heels. And even when Sadie is in her Sadie clothes and I'm not dressed like a lady, I am wearing fucking heels. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. That's right. We had a great, there was a great company, a Spanish company that made those replica guns. And uh, yeah, they were incredibly accurate. And even sit down to, like you said, to the weight and whatnot. Peter got really awesome. Because uh, Micah, has, yeah, but Micah had the cool holsters that, well, he, they weren't cool, but they were different from everyone else. <laughs> and the way, and the way Peter figured out how to do them, man, I, you know, he gave, I saw that guy give himself blisters because he, he practiced for about two or three days straight. And then, I mean, we all got pretty nifty at it, but I liked the way Peter did his because he had the two. The reverse were, ones. Yeah, yeah, with the handles yeah. pointing yeah. inwards. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Who was yeah. that? For, what was that? Uh, 310 to Yuma. Who was that actor again, Pete? Ben. Yes, yes. And, and Foster? And, and Foster. Yes. And, and Foster. he's the same jacket. Micah and him have almost the same It's very jacket. similar. And he yeah, had yeah. the guns reversed like that. But when you look through all the footage, you realize there's only a couple seconds here and there where you can actually uh, kind of see the mechanics of what he does. And then I had to look up some random, you know, gunslinger competitions and stuff. So then I would just watch those things and try to figure out how to how to t grab the guns and so they'd flip around forward when you're pulling them out from the opposite way. Yeah, I had blisters over over these fingers. Yeah. Um, I needed like both hands to try to get it in the holster. Like I'd miss. <laughs> <laughs> I missed plenty, that's I, for sure. Yeah, but you, we, you know, but you don't even have to get it right once. That's right. <laughs> it is like riding a bike though. I just, I just did a short film that was a Western and I just, just yeah, yeah. Was like, can I, can I do it? Can I flip around my gun like a real? And I could. And right. all of like the gun handlers on set were like, how does she know what she's doing? And I was like, awesome. Oh, well, I worked on a western <laughs> for five years, so. <laughs> Actually, on that note, uh, was there anything that you guys took home, whether officially or unofficial. I don't know if you even want to admit that, but yeah, like, yeah, you I'll talk right about back. the guns, holsters and everything. I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, great. We have oh, a you... uh, uh, Wow. Did you, did you get to keep any of that cool stuff? All I can say oh, is uh, that I accidentally came home um, <laughs> with um, like nine of Rockstar's computers. <laughs> no, I... I accidentally, no, I didn't, that didn't happen. Uh, I accidentally came home once in a while with a few of those balls that we talked about earlier. Because the, the Velcro together. on them, you know, and changing out of it and my clothes and I would accidentally come home and I'd find it like days later, like stuck to something else or a sock, one of those little reflective balls. Um, so that's about it for me, not very exciting. But, uh, looks like Roger while Roger gets his visual uh, 
No, no. I, I, I lost it. It's gone. I thought Somebody you were going to go get it. something. What yeah, I, I can't. It's not. I can't. It's not where I thought it was. Okay. No. Or did you, I got my you boots. Second thoughts. I, they're Arthur's boots. I've got Arthur's boots. The oh. same, they were the same cowboy boots I wore. I wore the whole time. The, oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, and the funny story is, is like about a year away, a, a year before we all wrapped, I, I did say, hey, is there any chance, you know, can I get these boots when we're done? And they're like, okay, we'll see what we can do. And then on the day that I finally thought, you know, there was a few false alarms, but at the, what I pretty, was pretty sure was my last day, I just took them, you know, and I put them in the bag, you know, and, and you're going to be getting like, a call tomorrow from you know, but about two, two weeks later, Rod calls me really upset and he says, Raj, I'm really sorry. I know you wanted your boots, but we can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I'm like, oh, now I'm the ho most horrible person in the world because I'm like, it's okay, Rod. I stole them two weeks ago on my last day. Oh. <laughs> and they're like, okay, fine. You're never coming back. <laughs> Rod, did you get anything? No, I, th I thought the party sure. get I did take things like, like Kylie had mentioned uh, that Susan Grimshaw smokes, but it's really a straw or sometimes they would use tape and they would tape all kinds of different things they would make out of tape but i had a cigarette that was made out of tape and actually one one end of it had a little tiny red piece of tape on it oh that's cool <laughs> and i i have it somewhere i thought it was here in the chicken coop but i guess it's not <laughs> <laughs> i also have oh sorry but i also have a sound pack of the one, the original uh, face cams that we had when we started. What? I have, I have a, pa yeah, I got the pack that the, all the batteries used to go into. Oh, wow. That was given to me. That okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't steal a goddamn thing. <laughs> I, I, not a goddamn thing. I, I remember one time I went to, instead of having them make a, a copy of like a contract or something that I need, I went to take a picture of it and I got yelled at. I mean, I was afraid to even take my own ass home. I, I was like, I'm, I'm not, no. Oh yeah, you couldn't, fuckler. yeah, we, yeah, I remember every, sometimes people would try and take pictures. It was like, no, man, I can't do that. Man. Yeah, yeah, they only yeah. had to tell me that once. I was like, mm, okay, course, Alex, yeah. Yeah. Mm. never. Alex, anything you want to confess to? So I never, I never stole anything. No, but I definitely did a hardcore press for this dope hat that I saw a lot of the engineers and a couple of the directors wearing. And it was this rock star hat. Oh, um, really it was cool beautiful. Hat. It like, it wasn't, it wasn't a, like a trucker hat. It was like a proper baseball cap. So it didn't have the like, you know, place to put your hair through it. It was actually just like beautiful. It was one piece. Like yeah, new era. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was stellar. And I just kept commenting every time I saw one being like, is there any? I think I remember you was? doing that. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't. It was no secret. No, no. Yeah, I remember you comment. Not Now that you say that. Did you ever? You didn't ever get it? Oh, I did. You did? Yes, I did. Nice. And then. At the end of it, so I got super because I was just so blown away by the experience. And, you know, at the end of five plus years, I remember thinking like at all the false ends, I just kept crying, which isn't, I, I like, I didn't know how to control myself. I was, I remember there was one day when I was in the booth and I was like, really sir, just need to take a minute. And like one day when we were, you know, in the sound stage, and I was just not not showing any emotion, but just like tears streaming down because no one was giving me the like, hey, this is the last day. And if I could do that and I can just like hug and get emotional and then we could clear it. But like, I just kept feeling like I was holding on to something. And so I kept, um, kept pushing for my hat. I got my hat, then I kept working. And then I was like, all right, I'm actually, as soon as everything's available online, I'm buying one of everything. So I think I have a lighter. I have the deck of playing cards I have the special box because I asked them to just let me know and I and I did this all out of pocket <laughs> because oh my I have my, you know outlaws for life shirt because I just knew this was going to be this moment in history and turns out I'm far more sentimental than I ever realized um so yeah I have all of that stuff but it's nothing I I I took 
Right. Oh, something I do I have a lock of. Uh, I, bought. I do have a lock of Roger's hair. Um, from. Don't tell him that. I think. Let's move on. <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna do with it? Oh God! Dude. I've already said too much. Let's move on, Brett. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm noticing a very special question on Instagram that I didn't notice until just now. Um, is Micah Bell the real hero of Red Dead Redemption 2? And that's from somebody <sighs> named Peter Blum, Blumquist? I don't really know how to say it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard of that guy. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I saw that question too. Yeah. Who, who is that question too? Um, He's, and he was wondering if Micah Bell is the real hero. The like real. through a secret, you know, some speaking of cutscenes or something, there was something that was, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I'll, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. <laughs> the, the answer to that question is uh, no. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. I thought I'd give it a shot. Are we not all the antagonists in our lives? In some way? Um, let's see. <laughs> Deep. All right, Miss Taya Tenney. She would like to know, how do they shoot things like Arthur being strung up by his ankles in Blessed Are the Peacemakers? So we've already established performance oh, yeah. capture, all kinds of extreme things. I'll put you back on her. How do they capture the really extreme stuff like that? So Roger, I'll go to you first. So I think Blessed are the Peacemakers. I think that's the mission where Arthur gets captured by the O'Driscolls after the botched peace talks with Dutch and, and Cole. And um, anyways, to answer that, we had a, there was a dummy. Uh, they had a, a combat dummy hung upside down. I offered to do it for real, but we were worried about the face cam falling off of my head. Uh, so we came up with a, a happy, a happy compromise, which I, I think worked. I mean, it's, I, I'm, it's hard for me to say, but you know, when you play the game, it looks good at least. So the dummy that was about my weight, uh, that's what the actor who's playing Colin O'Driscoll was punching and whatnot. And that's where he was addressing his lines too. And then I was like just a couple of feet away, hanging off the back end of a table upside down, uh, maybe and a couple of feet away from the other actors, whose name I forget, his eye line. <laughs> So, uh, and then we were able to get a pretty secure chin strap for my uh, face helmet cam, just in case anything bad happened. But I was a lot closer to the ground, so it had less to fall if anything were to bad to happen. So that's how we did it in the end. And it, I think it worked out well. And it was great too, because had it been me, had it actually been me, then the guy playing Colin wouldn't have been able to go full throttle when he's pistol whipping me and punching me and stuff. So in the end, it probably worked out for the better. Yes, indeed. All right. All right. Uh, VYD over on Twitter. Um, when did you guys officially start working on the game? What year was it? I'll go, yeah. uh, uh, Rob, sorry. Uh, you know what? You should maybe ask Peter because I think Peter might have been the first one to work on it. I think so. Oh, no way. All right. I'll flip it over to Peter. I think I was. I was, um, <clears throat> well, certainly I was, uh, I was there before Roger. Um, I know that for a fact. I don't, Roger, you're going to have to tell me what year that was because I know that I showed up to do some stuff. Um, yes. Roger wasn't there. I was doing some random things. Uh, and then um, for maybe a couple days. It and was then... August of 2013. And I think it, my first day was your second or third day. Was wow. that? Okay. <laughs> uh, bless you. Bless you. Bless, bless you. you. Um, so I, yeah, was, is that right? So I was there for just a few days before Roger. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, what, uh, of and that's when we did those, uh, uh, Tall trees, uh, big shadow, big tall, shadow, tiny tree. Tiny tree. That was that right. one. What does that even mean? <laughs> what is that? What in the world does that even mean? Big shadow, <laughs> tiny <laughs> tree. <laughs> what in the world does that even mean? That's my impression of of uh, of Roger. 
Yeah, we got that. Yeah, that was good. That was wild. I'll keep doing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna send one Alex's way. So, your revenge on the O'Driscolls, and actually, now that I think about it, this could piggyback on what you were saying about what went too far. Um, your revenge on the O'Driscolls, everything was the culmination of your, you know, of your story arc. Um, how much did that emotionally take out of you just going through that whole, I mean, that just must have been like next level uh, insanity. And was that what you were talking about? Where you went hey, too far? Multi-layered, whoever asked this, thank you. Uh, because they asked one part, but now I'm, I'm nerd now. Yeah. No, let's spit, let's spit all over it. Uh, so an interesting thing with Sadie's arc for me, uh, we actually filmed her first scenes in the beginning. And, uh, I will say that the rest of the scenes for the most part that I filmed were not in a linear, a linear fashion. So, uh, but the beginning was this, you know, woman who is broken, who is <laughs> just my no. husband in the back there. You hey. 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 Yeah. Hi, Josh. Uh, Hi, guys. Every time he ends up on uh, on Instagram, people are like, Jake, is that you? Like, I mean, he looks similar, but no. Uh, so I filmed the very beginning bit and a lot of people don't even recognize on their first playthrough that that Sadie when Micah is terrorizing me like the creepazoid he is that is your first that's right <laughs> okay that's right Micah right? okay so so that's nobody cool. knows because here is this woman who's just been I mean imagine the worst things that can happen to you happening to you you're your most vulnerable and right. so that to begin with was like a very interesting job. I like get a facial scan. I realize I'm working for Rockstar. I sign these crazy NDAs. And then my first, my first day is like just being in utter terror, crying, shaking, you know, like just, just embodying this absolute trauma. And mm -hmm. then I didn't hear anything for like two months. And so I was like, <laughs> okay, well, either it was a job well done or they'll never hire me again. I, you know, there was no understanding that like, Hey, by the way, like this is going to be a real character. There's a whole arc there's, you know, and so then the next bits that I put together were, oh, okay. She's at the camp. And then it was like, Oh, you know, uh, she's sort of incorporating. And then I had like a few couple great missions, but I don't really think that I understood the gravity of how my character was involved until two and a half years in because so much of what we did was out of order and you know there were maybe you would work or at least for me two weeks and then like nothing for like another six months so it was really hard and again unlike a film that you normally do like with a film you get a script it's a whole script and what we were doing on red dead redemption 2 was these sequences and so half the time I had no idea the context really. And, and, you know, the directors were amazing and Rod Edge was always like making sure that we could talk to the animators and whomever else and the writers that would like actually allow us to get as much context and information as we could garner to make it the most real, the most elevated that we could do. But I remember being like, so I don't know what the NDA said. Uh, hey, Roger, could I, could I read your script? Uh, hey, yeah, um, Rob, could, could I see what, what your lines are? Because I was just trying to piece together what was happening. And a lot of the time I had no idea. I didn't even really realize what we were working on for an embarrassing amount of time, truly. So um, yeah, I, I, I think that when you see Sadie in her different incarnations, it's very authentic and it's very like, I'm giving it my everything. And so when they would, uh, I, I'm a big fan of something for anybody who's an artist out there, even if you're doing a self tape, even if you're on stage, if you're, if you're just rehearsing, 
I believe in something called a fuck it take. And a fuck it take is something that after you've done all your work and you know what you're doing, you decide, you know what? I know what I planned. I know what I'm doing here. Let's just do one. Let's just say fuck it. Wait, and wait, 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 wait. You wait till the end to do that? You, Peter starts there. Yeah, it's part of his magic and his misery. I think it's Peter, obvious. Peter stays there. <laughs> Peter's I'm Peter's just stay in that take. It's yeah. fine. It's just fuck it. Right. Uh, Peter, no, no, no. Tone it down a bit. Okay. Fuck it. Well, when you're in at 130%, it's I don't even know what that means for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I guess I guess that's a good moment, Brett, for me to jump in. I I I do believe it has All been that? an hour. I'm sorry to say I am the bearer of bad news. The hour has flown by. So I'd like to say thank you to all of you for hanging in and answering questions and being amazing at what you do and keep doing it. We really appreciate it. Uh, from all the fans of myself and Brett, we'd like to say thank you guys. And uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime soon. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Sure, there's not one, thank there's you not all. one bucket question because, you know, <laughs> it would round it out. <laughs> all the best, Brett? everyone. Yeah. Outlaws for life. Outlaws for life. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks.